Hi, my name is Pat, and this is my channel, Book Chat with Pat, and I'm glad that you're here. Today I'm going to be doing my weekly wrap-up. First, I've been participating this month in the I'm with the Band book club, where we have been reading Sarah J. Mass's A Court of Thorns and Roses. And we're reading this in protest of the state of Utah's banning this book and all of the books in this series from all public schools in the entire state of Utah. At the present time, there are 13 books by seven authors, six of whom are women, on the list of banned books. Under Utah's law, schools are required to report to the State Board of Education any book that they deem inappropriate. And when a book is flagged three times, it goes on the state list, the, the statewide banned list. <clears throat> Under this Utah law, public schools have to actually get rid of the books. They cannot be sold or sent elsewhere or redistributed elsewhere. They must be thrown out or destroyed. One member of the State Board of Education in Utah who is ending her term has said that the list of banned books is far too short. And she said that she suspects that there will be hundreds more. She said hundreds more need to go, including books used in science and medical related classes. All sexually explicit content she went on should be kept out of all K through 12 schools. Under this new Utah law, only a member of the State Board of Education can appeal a decision once a book ends up on this list. And they can do so by asking for a full review, a full board, the full board to review the book within 30 days of the book being placed on the list. To date, there has not been even one appeal lodged. <clears throat> I don't think I've ever read anything in this genre before. I don't really read a lot of fantasy, and I, I definitely don't read romance, and so this, this is considered romanticy. I'm pretty sure I've never read anything in this genre before. But that's my personal preference. I absolutely think that these books should exist and be available to readers who are interested in reading them. This novel, A Court of uh, Thorns and Roses is actually a retelling of the beauty and the beast story in a land with shape-shifting fairies who interact with human beings. By putting this whole series on a statewide banned book list, Utah has actually succeeded in making these books much, much more desirable to readers. We're discussing this novel in both a Voxer group and also a Fable group, which is a new to me app. This book club is the brainchild of MJ at Reading This Life. MJ is also the creator of the Read 24 in 2024 banned book challenge as a fundraiser to support the good work of the American Library Association, MJ had these t-shirts designed and she's selling them. So this is reading, reading, reading rebels read banned books. I'll put a link to her channel in my notes below, and you can still get one of these shirts if you're interested. There are still some available. To date, MJ has made about $200 from the sales, and, and she's sending that to the American Library Association. Um, <clears throat> 
Do I think that, that this Sarah J. Mass series is great literature? No, I do not. But I also do not think that it is obscene or pornographic or otherwise harmful to the mostly young people, and probably mostly young women, who are reading these books. I'm also participating uh, to the degree that I'm able in Shake Timber, a month long reading event where we're reading several plays by Shakespeare and several plays about Shakespeare, uh, and several works about, about Shakespeare. This is an event hosted by Kelly at Books I'm Not Reading, Jason at Old Blues Chapter and Verse, and Nicole at uh, A Day of Small Things. These wonderful hosts have designed a schedule um, of plays to be read for um, each week of the month. While I'm trying to read um, as many of the plays as I can, I'm not exactly following their schedule um, because I'm going to be traveling this month. So I'm, I'm, I'm reading just as much as I can uh, right, right now. Um, <clears throat> I made a very good start this, this week. Uh, the first first thing I did was I did the um, their Shakespeare journey tag. I thought that was a good way for me to kick off my participation in this in this event. Um, and in in that tag, I just talked about my experience with reading Shakespeare, starting in I think the ninth grade, and you know all through high school, college, graduate school, and then certainly all through my teaching career, where I was reading Shakespeare and teaching Shakespeare uh, as as well. Um, so I really really enjoyed doing that that tag, which they created last year, but I, it is being revived this year as as newcomers to BookTube are are jumping in and joining joining the the fun as as well. Um, additionally, this week I read the great tragedy King Lear, and I also read the magnificent comedy Twelfth Night. <clears throat> These were both rereads for for me, and I also am planning to read Macbeth. That will probably be in in the uh, in the coming in the coming week. Um, additionally, I read the chapters in Harold Bloom's great Shakespeare, The Invention of the Human. I read his chapter, his essay on King Lear, and I read his chapter on um, Twelfth Night as, as well. Um, Bloom is probably one of the greatest, if not the greatest, literary critic of Shakespeare's work um, from the 20th and 21st centuries. His knowledge of all of the plays is, it's, it's staggering. Um, frankly, I can't think of any other literary scholar who has such a grasp on the entire body of Shakespeare's work. Then I also read commentary uh, in this, from this new book by Judy Dench, Shakespeare, The Man Who Pays the Rent. Judy Dench is one of my very favorite actresses. And in this book, she talks about every Shakespearean role that she has played in her 70 plus year career. The book is really a series of conversations with actor and director uh, Brendan O'Hay. Um, and in the case of King Lear, and I read her all, I read the entire conversation about King Lear, Judy Dench uh, was in that play three times. Um, when she was very young, she was the understudy for Cordelia at the Old Vic. 
Uh, she played Regan for the Royal Shakespeare Company, and she played Goneril in a radio production with the actor John Gielgud as Lear. And this was a special production that was made to celebrate Gielgud's 90th birthday. In the case of Twelfth Night, Dench played Viola in 1969 at the Royal Shakespeare Company, and she later played Maria uh, with the Old Vic Company. These conversations are treasures. Judy Dench knows Shakespeare inside and out. Her reflections on the plays sometimes scene by scene, are outstanding. Her personal anecdotes about specific productions are delightful, and her memories are just really clear and, and, and sharp. Um, <clears throat> her sense of humor <laughs> is also abundant throughout. Uh, this has been a real, a real treat. So King Lear is probably the most devastating of all of Shakespeare's tragedies. The play dramatizes the story of an aged king of ancient Britain, King Lear, whose plan to divide up his kingdom among his three daughters goes very badly and ends absolutely tragically. He decides to, he foolishly decides to test each daughter by asking how much she loves him. The older daughters, Goneril and Regan, they decide, you know, they're going for a big part of the kingdom and they decide on flattery. The youngest, Cordelia refuses to play along. She won't answer the question. And Lear loses his mind over this, and he disowns her and banishes her. She quickly marries the king of France. The older, her older sisters quickly turn on their father. And Ultimately, Lear is left wandering madly in the elements in, during a furious storm. Then there's also a subplot going on at the same time that involves fathers and sons. Um, the Earl of Gloucester has two sons. He has a legitimate son Edgar, and he has an Ill illegitimate son, Edmund. And Gloucester suffers unimaginable horrors in this play, um, in part because he sides with the old King Lear, who is being much maligned by his eldest daughters. But Gloucester also becomes involved in this horrible plot because the illegitimate son is plotting against his, his brother, you know, because he also is trying to, you know, get his, get his father's title. So we've got sort of similar situations going on in these two subplots with, um, you know, uh, children rising up against uh, their their parents, and they do so um, mostly uh, out of out of greed and with a, an enormous enormous amount of of cruelty. In the introduction to the Folger edition, um, the Folger Library, uh, you know, notes that that we are we are drawn to this play in spite of its really unrelenting tragedy um, and, and, and horror, the absolute horror of, of human cruelty, um, 
because it is at heart a family story. It's a story about fathers and daughters, fathers and sons, sisters and their husbands, brothers, sibling rivalry, greed within families, um, and then also just the, the painful realities of, of old age and all of the vulnerabilities that, that come with that. So there's something in this play, you know, in all of those issues that are just so um, easy for an audience to, to relate to and, and identify with. Um, <clears throat> the Folger Library uh, notes on their website. Shakespeare's King Lear challenges us with the magnitude, intensity, and sheer duration of the pain that it represents. <clears throat> so after King Lear, <laughs> I opted to go for Twelfth Night next rather than Macbeth. Um, which I will be reading, uh, as I said, probably this this week, uh, because I needed I needed a comedy. I needed some some relief. Here's how the Folger Library introduces Twelfth Night. Quote: Named for the Twelfth Night after Christmas, the at the end of the Christmas season, Twelfth Night plays with love and power. The Countess Olivia, a woman with her own household, attracts Duke or Count Orsino. Two other would-be suitors are her pretentious Stuart Malvolio and also Sir Andrew Aguecheek. Close quote. <clears throat> so into this scene then involve... Uh, sort of enters two twins who are actually involved in a shipwreck and then they're separated. Uh, this is Viola and Sebastian. And these twin siblings, each one thinks that the other one has been drowned in, in the, the, the shipwreck. And Viola ends up entering into this this court, the court of, of Orsino. Uh, and she she seeks to work for him, um, but she does so in disguise. And she disguises herself as a young man. So Viola appears in the court of Orsino as the young man Cesario. <clears throat> So you know that we're going to have all kinds of cases of you know, mistaken identity and you know, people falling in love with, with people that they really can't marry. Um, and there are gonna be all kinds of, of love triangles and um, just sort of a wonderful kind of madcap uh, adventure ensues uh, until you know, as happens in most Shakespeare uh, comedies, you know, everybody ends up, almost everybody ends up with somebody by, by the end of the play, even if it's not the person that they originally thought that they were going to end up with. I'm also this weekend going to re-watch um, the 1996 film version of Twelfth Night. Uh, it stars um, Hel uh, Helena Bonham Carter, Nigel Hawthorne, um, <clears throat> Ben Kingsley is in it as well. I saw it years ago, probably when it came out. Um, I may have shown it a couple of times as well. I may have used it uh, in teaching Twelfth Night, um, but I haven't seen it in a, in a long time. And I'm, I'm really looking forward to watching that this weekend. I think that that should be, should be good fun. 
I'm also trying to participate a little bit in Shorty September, um, where we're reading short works. Um, I read several of the short stories that Angelia at Read and Reread is posting each day. Angelia is doing this wonderful thing. She reads a short story every day of September. So she's got 30 short stories picked out and she posts them um, uh, she's posting them each each week, what the stories are for, for the week. And then each weekend, she discusses the stories that, uh, that have been read that, that week. So, so far, I've read a bunch of the stories that she posted. I read Flannery O'Connor's Good Country People, and Angelia apparently posts this one. This is the kickoff story um, every, every year during Shorty. Uh, September. I also read Edgar Allan Poe's The Telltale Heart. I read Roddy Doyle's Hearing Aids. And I read Naomi Kretzer's Better Living Through Algorithms. And I'll put all of those um, titles in, in my notes as well. And they're on Angelia's channel as well. And I'll put a link to, to Angelia's channel in the notes um, as well. Um, additionally, um, additionally, for Shorty September, um, I made a Poetry Thursday video, um, including very short poems. So I did a short video um, in which I read several short poems by several different poets, including um, Robert Frost, William Wordsworth, Alfred Lord Tennyson, William Butler Yeats, and Linda Paston. So I have a couple things planned for the month of September and different ways that I'm going to include poetry to kind of align with some of the events that are going on and that I'm, I'm participating in. Finally, I'm also participating in Framed, which is the September event around art books. And I will post um, all of the hosts for this event in my notes as well. Uh, and I just started the book that I've chosen um, to read for, for Framed, and that is um, Patrick Bringley's all the Beauty in the World, the Metropolitan Museum of Art and Me. And this is um, kind of a memoir in which um, Patrick Bringley describes his uh, about 10 year um, uh, career as working uh, as a guard in the Metropolitan Museum of, of, of Art. Um, and I think that this book will also count for Shorty September. Um, if I look at the notes at the back of the book, the book is more than 200 pages long, but the actual narrative of the memoir is 180 pages. So I think this counts not only for framed, but also as a book that I'm reading for, for Shorty September. Um, additionally, this week I did a video on the 10 books that made me the reader that I am today. Uh, and this video was made in response to earlier videos that I had seen from Brian, uh, the bookish Texan, and Ollie at Criminali. Um, it was a great little exercise and I really enjoyed thinking about how different books in my younger formative years, you know, had a powerful impact on me and would influence the kind of reader that I would go on, you know, to, to be. Um, so that was, that was a lot of fun. And, and I think a lot of other people, I mean, it's not a tag video, but it's the kind of thing that really does invite participation. And I think that um, I think there are going to be some other uh, versions of this um, in response to my video and Ollie's and, and Brian's. I, I hope so. It was, it was really fun to do. So I guess that's it for, for this week. I will be on my way to Ireland midweek, so I'm not sure that I will have a weekly 
wrap up next weekend, but um, I will have some videos going where, where I can, and um, I will be back with my regular weekly wrap ups when I return. As always, I thank you for watching. I hope that you're doing well. I'll speak with you again soon. Take care.